We are gathered here today in memory of our dear colleagues. When we heard that it was no more, we were shocked and sad. Death has taken away a warm individual, more importantly, a loving husband, a father, and a prayer to so many others, including us of all, and good friend. While we mourn the loss of a colleague, we pay tribute and we celebrate a life that was well lived. A life committed to service in his own country, where he served the people of Jamaica well. Constable Jarrett retired from this noble institution with over three decades of service. We know that he was ill for a while, and although he had a great illness, he had courage. He fought to the last. Many persons in these circumstances would have given up, but not him. He was courageous. Life can be fleeting, but a life lived to the fullest stays in fond memories. Constable Jarrett, through his grace and endured himself to many, yes, he was loved by many. I know this is particularly a difficult and painless and painful time, I'm sorry, for the family.
your children with your love. We are asking at this time that you will come very close to those especially who are mourning. Please wrap your lovely arms around them. Please comfort them. Please bring joy to them. And please assure them that you always be with them in time of need. We ask God that you will continue to guide this program so that your name will be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See? So one, we ask that the doors be left clear. So the entrance that are moving on there, we ask that you leave that space clear. So in case of an emergency, then we will leave freely. The first two programs in your booklets is Youth Club Section at the Hall Primary School. Good evening, everyone. So this afternoon I'm standing on behalf of the Johns Hall Primary School where Ms. Jarrett is a teacher. So I'm doing a tribute on behalf of the members of staff here. I hear a sound of a mighty rushing away.
that are present with us and I'm going to be asking at this time all of our retired members to stand wherever you are. All retired police men and women to stand. Put your hands together for them. Thank you for your service. You may be seated. To the immediate family members that are present, wife, mother, children, for name and mom, we pray that God will grant you peace, that peace that passes all understanding in the time that you are going through. We pray that the service will be of such that at the end, even though you will grieve, you will still find something to give God glory for. We want to move this program along as best as possible. If you had a chance to peruse your program, you'll notice that we have a number of items. So we want to ensure that we move through the items as best as possible. So I am establishing at this juncture that the persons who will come after to make your contribution to use no more, you can use less, but no more than three minutes. If you reach the three minute mark, we, well, let, 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 let me not say we, I will be coming and standing beside you. Right? And when I stand beside you, it means that you have exhausted the three minutes. No, personally, I don't want to stand beside anybody. So what you can do for us is to ensure that you keep that time frame in mind, whatever it is that you are going to do, to keep it short and to the point that everyone can get the opportunity to share in this Thanksgiving service. So at this time, I welcome the Commissioner's Tribute, which will be done by Superintendent Sharon Beagle, Commanding Officer for Animal Division.
Good morning, everyone. I'm going to be reading a poem, The Dash, by Linda Ellis. I read of a man who stood to speak at the funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on the tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted that first came the date of birth and spoke the following date with tears. But he stood what matters most of all was the dash between those years. For the dash represents all the time they've spent on earth, and now only those who love them know what that little line is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters most is how we live and love, and how we spend our dash. So think about this long and hard. Are there things you'd like to change? For you never know how much time is left and the things that can be rearranged. If you could just slow down enough to consider what's true and real and always try to understand the way other people feel and be less quick to anger and show appreciation more and love the people in our lives like we've never loved before. If we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, remembering the special dash might only last a little while. So, your eulogy is being read with your life's actions to rehash. Would you be proud of and be said that about how you spent your dash? And Milton was a grand uncle to me. And, you know, whenever Milton came to New York and he came to my dad's house and he hung out, we always did fun things. I look forward to him coming to hanging out with us um, because we would go to different places, parties, we would go to movies, we would go wherever, wherever he wanted to do. He was always a fun person, and that's really how I want to continue to remember him. So I know for sure that he enjoyed his dash. And I hope that this poem settles with you guys, and you can enjoy your dash as well. Rest in peace, on.
only using the play. And so I hope the family or dog at this moment. This is a music that brought peace. After the pastor had introduced and asked the retirees to stand, some other important people in the parish of St. James was in. And so there are two counselors who have acknowledged in the front. The one is from Granville Division. And one is from the Street Mount Division. And so we are playing a very significant role in the respect of communities. So I'm going to have to stand as well. And because you must be close to the police. We welcome you to the transfer service. At the same time, past the chambers, I noticed that he arrived through that door. Is past the chamber still? Or is it not? Or, yes. Uh, Pastor Chambers is the host pastor for the King's Seventh-day Adventist Church. And as pastors, they have a lot to do. So while he was on his way to this service, I was told that he will fulfill another mission before arriving and is here. So we thank God for his arrival. And he will make his service a little richer. Now we're at the reflection stage of the service. We have about 10 persons who will be performing in this section. So the pastor said three minutes to beg you. So first we have Mrs. Sharon Jarrett, then DSC Winston Milton, commanding officer for the parish of St. Trony. Then we have JC Retired Members Association that to which the children will move towards the caskets in an orderly manner while the picture will be on the wall reflecting the life of our brother after which Pastor Chambers will put this bit to the program. So please follow in that order. Thank you very much.
piece you sold very dearly. Sometimes my life feels so empty. I pray to God every day just to give me one more day with you. I wish I could still hear your voice and see your smiling face. You will never be forgotten. I think about you every minute of every day and treasure our happy memories that will never fade away. Losing someone causes pain that's hard to bear. My heart feels truly broken knowing who I am no longer here. When I first met you in 1995, I instantly fell in love with you. I talked about you all night. My sister Nadine was tired of hearing me talking about you. She said, why not shut up on the I didn't. I couldn't. I was in love. You pursued me and things evolved. I'm not going to talk this business. It was a very private person. All right? So I would just say, we gave each other 28 beautiful years. Mind you, he was not perfect, but he was perfect for me. Uh, a very close friend of mine, Miss Noble, tells me every day, you know, say you this one, I want this one, no other man will be with you. And she was right. Unconditional love. You were my home, my safe place, my everything, as every husband should be to their wife. This past year was a rough one for you, but you fought and you fought and held on for as long as you could. I know in my heart that you fought so hard. I tried to hold on. There were times when you would say to me, Pet, I am tired. But you still held on. God kept you. You held on because you know I needed you. Your mama needed you. My mom, you got to go right there. She needed you. Your sisters, which includes my sisters as well. Your brothers, which include my brothers, because this is the type of person that you were. You were such a family man. You went above and beyond for every single person. And this is not a part of my speech, but as I remember when he said, I remember one of his friends, she called me after he died, and she said to me, you know my husband? And I said to her, why did you say that? And she said, your husband make sure he can walk in that community. And this community was Anchovy. And he ensured that every child that is not going to school, he finds out why they're not going to school. If they did not have shoes, he gets shoes for them. If they didn't have books, he gets books. For them. I said to her, no, I know that. That's him. He does it everywhere he goes. That's just the type of person that he was. Jill was in the hospital. And even though he was so very sick and so very weak. I got my strength from him. This might be that I could do everything in the world. I mean, I didn't even have that confidence in myself. 
But because of him, I knew I had to be strong. People said to me, Girl, I don't want you to do this, you are so strong. I had to be strong. And by the way, that strength didn't come from me, that came from God. It was only God that there is no way I could possibly go through all that I was going through with my husband by myself. That had to be God. God proved himself. If I, if I didn't believe in him before, which I did, but if I didn't, at this time in my life, oh my word, I would have to believe in God. So at this time, I just want to encourage all of you. But I know I should be talking about my husband. I, I am telling you, if you are going through some things, just look to God. That's where your true strength lies. That's where your strength will come from to deal with whatever situation that you are going through. At this time, I just want to say that I miss you very much, Jay. And I know you are in a better place. You see, I'm not even using this anymore. I just want to speak from my heart that is the one who told me to. Jay was the vibes master. Anywhere the party was, yeah, he was there. And he was kicking up a star. You know, he got sick. On one of his visits, to the hospital, he was so, so very sick. You know, a doctor called me and said to me, Mrs. Jarrett, are you by yourself? I said, yes, I am. He said, are you driving? I said, yes, I am. He said, pull over. You know when a doctor came to that, can I be anything good? I pulled over. He said to me, your husband is going to do an operation now. And I'm telling you this, he doesn't. The chances of him surviving this operation is next to nothing. I started crying. He heard me crying. He took the phone from the doctor and he said to me, Honey, don't cry. Don't worry about it. Let it go. I found comfort. I said to myself, if this man is going to be doing an operation and he can so be confident in God, who am I not to be confident in God too? All the family members, we pray. Friends, they pray and God brought him through it. After this operation, when he came out of the hospital, he, he shared his testimony with me. He talked about that bright light whilst he was there in the hospital bed. There was a peace that came over him and he said, I was no longer afraid. Because between you and I, whew, that man started crying the time he went to the hospital. But at this time, you and Sister G, I did. We were afraid to go there because we knew we would start crying. We would want to come home. When he spoke to me about the bright light that came over him, he said there was such peace. He said I wasn't even afraid anymore. I knew everything was going to be okay. He had a connection with God. He God gave us, I consider it a bonus year to let him get his life together and also for us family members and friends to get our lives together also to create a stronger bond with him because I tell you I have loved this man from the first night because I don't know and I told you, I fell instantly in love with him. The last year, I didn't even know it was possible to love him more. I kid you not. This, 
the love grew not only for me, but yes, he loved me even more too. And so I just want to take this time out. God is still good. I know I can I can just go on knowing that he's waiting on me on the other side. And then he said to me, I'm still dead. No way did I go. And you better make sure I go home. So he went home. He went to our Savior. Like when when he got out of the hospital, he begged to be baptized. He begged. The first Sunday we went to church, he said, "What can I do?" I said to him, "That's not how they do it. I think there's a procedure." He said, "No, this is a Muslim post. I'm going to be ready to baptize." This man, he took a turn. When I say 360 degrees turn. That was my proudest moment. Spending all those 28 years with him, that time was a time that I will remember the remainder of my life. I quickly share with you a story 
in relation to a situation involving Jared, a motorist, and myself. I was in the office one day when the taxman came to me and said, Sir, Pastor Jared, give me six tickets. Give me three tickets. I asked him why, and he went on to give, the, give an explanation as to why these tickets were sent to him. But then he went on to say, only the day before, Jared gave me six tickets and said, the next time you see me, I'm going to give me a chance. No one passed to see me and they give me a cheat. <laughs> so I called a bit, I called Jared to my office and I explained the situation to him. I said, Jared, come on, say me. They promised that we give him a chance. He said, boss, the man actually committed six breaches, you know, like the day before. But I, I gave him all the three, so he didn't got a chance. Of course, he was hired to dispute that. That was the man that we called Hansel Jarrett. This is like jovial, but to the point. Managing traffic in Portugal Bay back in those days was a difficult and brilliant task. The city didn't have that dualized ingress and egress road that it now has. That means driving into Montego Bay in the mornings and leaving in the evenings, particularly along that red and gold corridor, was a very difficult and tedious task. One that will take you hours if you do not have an effective police presence out there. During those days, I deployed personnel along the corridor to facilitate fast movements of traffic. And of course, Jaro was assigned to the most difficult point. I always take the time out to explain to him why he was given this particular location. Uh, you know, because of the confidence I have in his ability as a professional road police and practitioner. With a smile on his face, he would always respond, Spare, don't worry yourself, we have this lock. And if he well, never had a problem at that point, he had it locked. Another thing that impressed me about the past of the journey was his vast knowledge of his role and function and how exceptionally well he discharged this. He kept the breast of a road traffic laws and this enabled him to perform his duty as a road police practitioner because he knew what he was about. And whenever he did what he does, he generally can withstand scrutiny from any angle. Anyone who knew Hans de Bajari back then and even before he died, I know people would say that he was always very neat in his attire, whether on or off duty. He was one of those police officers whose uniform seems to have been made on him. And all you have to do is just cancel the of those program and you'll see I'm not lying. Alright? Uh, at the end of a tour of duty, I usually start my duty about 6 o'clock, whilst we're in St. James, and push you until about 8. At the end of that tour of duty, you know, one looking at Jared then would wonder whether or not he was just getting off duty because of how neat he was. That was the pride that he took in his personal deportment. Whilst he was tough and a disciplined motorist, he was always courteous and professional. He epitomized the essence of a professional traffic guard. Off me to know, Hans de Jarrett was a joy to be around. His jovial personality made him the life of any social event. If you had the opportunity to go to him, then you will know what I'm talking about. If not just me, I can't express it in words, and I think of kind of a particular person, but that's the character that I know as built on your chart. Such was the depth of his jovial spirit that even when he was sick and possibly in pain, he maintained that spirit, that smile, and that outgoing composure. I can recall visiting with him at the University Hospital. Like those in the group, I was very apprehensive. I didn't know what to expect. But when I saw him, he was the very opposite of what I expected from him. He greeted me, our team, with that ever-present smile and went on to explain his heart healed and watch and spire whilst he was in the hospital. It was then that I realized the depth of this man's heart. He was indeed a very strong man. Finally, for those of you who knew Jared, you would have known that he was a family-oriented individual. You think about his family, 
he loved his family and he does what he, what he did for his family, providing for them. His love for his family was ever present, especially for his wife, Pet, who we saw here earlier, his children and other members of his family. To the family I say, may the stars carry your sadness away. May the flowers fill your heart with beauty. May hope forever wipe away your tears. And above all things, may the loving memories of Milton you try be with you and make you strong. Here with my friend, Van White. God bless. See you on the other side. A very good afternoon to you, George. My name is Van White Powell. I am a retired superintendent of police. And I am representing the association of past members. They all previously stood up and were acknowledged. Tribute for the life of Milton Bucharest. He cannot know of that purpose see, but all is well that is done by me. Today we pay tribute to a husband, father, family man, son, a friend of many, and a past member of the Jamaica Constabulary Force. He served for more than three decades. In November 1989, a batch of 189 members, consisting of 183 males, and 16 days started training at the Cobbler Training Wing in the cool climes of Manchester. Milton Jarrett was one of them. About 30 of us were placed in squad one. I was the lone female in the squad. When I took my seat, I was quickly flanked by two smiling gentlemen, one of which was Jarrett. The script went like this. Me, how did one of them put me in the middle? Like Jesus on the cross. Who know I did? Who know I did? Who did? Here is your name. Hey, I spot some money in here. You are the only one. Who you expect with this dumb guy? All this with much laughter. That was my introduction to Milton Jarrett. Full of life and laughter. Always smiling. Life to him was to be lived and to its fullest. He faced challenges with humor. Finding something to laugh at no matter how dire the situation. The trauma, who when he was diagnosed with his illness, saw me one day and laughingly said to me, Squaddy, they said me have this illness. In deep distress, I retorted, I can't help in that. He said, For me must do, life goes on. What a man. Greater courage in the face of adversity one could not find. He cared about his family, spoke lovingly of his wife, and treated his mother-in-law with so much respect she couldn't stop singing his praises. Like in Jamaica, he loved to play dominoes and enjoyed giving us good six love. He also played love and enjoyed playing a game called Wire Bandit. He was caught red-handed by the superintendent one day, playing this game. He bravely said, Super! Let me just finish this one. He was willing to face the music after, of course. Jared loved life and he did it to his fullest. Catching dropping legs when he heard old beats. He was a dancer, worthy of entering any dancing contest and emerging victorious. As was said before, he was a great biker. It was a beauty to watch him on his motorbike. Milton and Jared had many friends. One that stood by him in good times and bad, forever engraved in my memory, is a picture of one of his civilian friends kneeling down with such loving care to remove his boots at Pan Original Hospital when he was put on his motorbike. And he had gone there for treatment. How often do we see this love and respect between the police and the citizens to be out there? This is something that we should all emulate. To his wife, Charlotte, his mother, Irene, his children and other family members. As you, as you mourn, do so with the sure and certain hope of the resurrection. May we also continue to give you the love and support you need in the lonely days and months to come. What would spot you? May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you home and lead you into the holy city, Jerusalem. May the choir of angels bring you like Lazarus, once once more, may you have eternal rest. Adam's family, 
then Mr. Barrington Stewart, followed by Mr. David Ebanks, retired inspector, and then the Trumpet Corps Ministries will proceed with the fourth uh, item of reflection. Immediately after the reflection, we'll be having the uh, music, a musical selection, which will be done by Festus Johnson. Uh, so we'll, uh, during which we'll have the offering being lifted. I'll come back to relate to that specifically, but just to note that there is an adjustment to that element of the program. So we'll take them in that order. The Chandler's family. Yeah. 
carry you in spirit until we meet again. We love you so, but Jesus loves you best. Rest well, Jared. Just to know that we will add one uh, more item to the reflections, uh, which will be done by the St. James Police Division and Traffic Department. So they will come at number five. Thank you. Milton Jarrett. Milton Jarrett has been known to me for from January. very conscientious person. We quickly developed our relationship at the Jamaica Police Academy, which ventured up until his death. Milton is a very dedicated, hard-working servant of the state. We Every time we met, we discussed nothing but training. Training and training. Many times the kind of person who, every time we see each other, there's a gleam in his eyes. We always discuss training. His consensus, he always thinks of his family. He is always speaking good things of his father. He is such an unassuming person, hardworking and dedicated to his job. Then comes graduation, and we have to separate our separate ways. We continue our contact through. Telephones. But after a while, Milton and I rejoined in Fatima. And so I saw the better side of Milton now. And I realized he was a family person. He speaks very delicately, intriguingly, and lovingly of his family. My heart cries out right now for Milton Jack. We developed such friendship that has lost from 1986 until this day. I can tell you, I'm very, very much hurting at the rank of the we normally, especially I, call him Jaro. And I would say to you, Jaro, wow, you have only gone before us. But Jaro, we know of your dedication to that job that you were so impressed with. And our friendship that will last him until death. Stay good, my brother. Wow. In the 90s, we were heavily in station in St. In 1994, Milton was working at Amity Hall Police Station, and I was working at Mount Salem. I got transferred to Amity Hall, and I was reluctant because I did not really want to go to such a rural place. But Milton assured me that it was a very nice place to work. And so, I went there. On my arrival, I realized that Milton was well loved and respected in all the police communities within Amitya. I soon got another appointment in the system as well. We participated in all those activities, dominoes, 
cricket, football, we went to church services, and I carried out my job of the party. The party of it, a party of the night. You would have much work to be done in comprise to the way we were in the city. And then a party of the night, we were at mobile patrol. And we used to go out and meet and we used to probably had them to insist in and sing a lot of songs. He was an extremely good singer. So one day we were singing, we stopped at various locations, singing choruses. And about 15 minutes after, we got a call from Irwan Kanchu. And Irwan Kanchu, ladies and gentlemen, and sister, St. James, Hanover, Westwood, and Chilani. And the person here said, Mr. Ibang, Mr. Mr. Jai, for the job in the radio. We got a brand new driver seat and a radio system here. We were called by the superintendent the following day, and we were reprimanded. However, he said, the good thing about you was that you weren't doing anything which was unbecoming. So we got off that. Milton. How can I describe you? Loving, dedicated friend, was full of armor, um, very over, and he wasn't afraid to let you know his mind. I can recall, my mom is 92 years old. She lives in St. Louis. And when I learned about Milton's death, I went and I told her, and she said, I must offer her condolences to his wife and children. And I'll give you a joke. And I remember the day. On the Heroes Day in 1994, Luther and I went to St. Luther to visit my mom. Of course, I'm a lover of the called John Cake and Fried Dumpling. I love that guy. Mama had prepared fried dumpling and ackee and salt for me. And of course, lemonade. So we went there. Had the food, Milton hardly finishes them again. And he said, Why, baby? Why, Mrs. Man, them again? Tears of my grief and the best way ever. So I said, You don't know why. And Mama Bessie will be like Jared responded, Mrs. Simmons, I need some more them again. I'll put some rest in it. <laughs> that was the time of us. I remember when I spoke to you on the 20th of March, 2022, and I inquired of him how he was feeling. And he said, well, baby, the body is here, but when I want to try to walk, after have to hold the chair, I don't think I can walk. It's good. I said, Milton, I'm glad that you were baptized in that moment. The life to the Lord, so please remember this. Pray by the Lord. I know Shalom and Petra, if love could have saved Milton, he would have been here with us today. I know about the relationship. As a matter of fact, I remember when he met him in 1995. We were all together, so I know a lot. I showed him his my friend. I am a bit disappointed. Disappointed in the fact that no ceremony or service is done for retired police. If it doesn't make a difference for us, that's all that exists when you have died, there will be a ceremony and funeral for you. It does not exist. In this case, there is not a fault because of that for being done. At this time, Ladies and gentlemen, I would love to ask all certain members of the Jamaica Council of Force and the Times to stand. If you don't want to, you don't have to. I'm going to say something. I respectfully ask us, after the count of three, to give a salute to Mr. Joy for his service to the Jamaica Council of Force and to Jamaica. One, two, three. 
Sleep well, my friend. And rest in peace. See you in the next generation.
I want to read Psalms 34, verse 18 with you. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and save the crush in spirits. Good afternoon, everyone. For those who don't know me, I am Constable Natalie Wallace Atkinson, friend and former co worker of Milton Jarrett. Milton Jarrett was affectionately called by us Jarrett. There are many words and phrases that could be used to describe Jarrett. Kind, strong, nonchalant, hardworking, and committed. However, the one that rests at the forefront of my mind is Anson Hero. During his tenure in the organization, Jarrett was always early. He seldom took a sick or departmental leave. However, Saturday evenings were a no-no for work, as he made it clear that he had to visit his mother in Westmoreland to enjoy the kumbusu she made for him on Saturdays. Jared was destined to be a policeman. At an early age, he exhibited qualities that led him to his career path. In that, he was a home guard and a cadet. Later in life, he became a district constable, member of the Island Special Constabulary Force, and served as a member of the Jamaica Constabulary Force for 26 years as a motorcyclist at the Montego Bay Traffic Department until his retirement on September 26, 2020. He was popular among his peers at work and the members, and members of the general public who he humbled, served, and was committed to. His distinguished actions allowed me to meet him long before I was actually introduced to him in 2004, because I was always hear of the efficacy and efficiency with which he carried out his duties. He loved to dress. He was always in his uniform, and out of his uniform, he was a fashion icon. Whenever we went on outings together, his long pointed shoes always stood out. <laughs> Smoking, drinking, and playing the poker box were past time for Jared. I talked to him about it, however, to no appeal. I do train him to tell his wife about it, and he said, You're in farm and all. Jared was very jovial, a storyteller and nothing bothered him. He would tell tall and unbelievable tales that never failed to make you laugh. In recent years, after retiring, he had been admitted at the hospital. At the time, we were worried as our efforts to contact him were unsuccessful. However, when we finally got through to him, he was not only in high spirits, but he jokingly let us know that he was attending to the patient on the ward. <laughs> we followed along, reminding him that he was the patient and not the doctor. Thereafter, when I called Jared despite being ill, we still laughed and talked a whole time. It is sad to see a man of such virtue and character me. If I was only blessed with the number of moments which, we would, which would fail in comparison to the numerous moments he shared with his family, can he feel this much sadness over his passing? One can imagine the grief. They must be suffering. Goodbye, Jared. Know you are deeply missed. And to the family, the loss of a loved one is never easy. And at times, we may be in so much pain, pain that feels it can never be healed. However, in this time, remember the word which says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy as sure as the sun will rise, joy will come in the morning.
song for you. You have me sing one verse with go. Yes. Oh, I don't know. In the secret.
uh, as soon as the other Miss Jarrett is finished, I'm asking Trishana just to make her way as well. We we'll try to follow that. Oh, thank you.
when responsibilities and adulthood shoot us off in different directions. He had the leadership of, the, of an eldest child. He would constantly call ahead of time to remind us about an upcoming celebration or holidays. He was a loving son who recognized that children are an heritage of the Lord. He acts as our mother's hand and feet, and that was not just our mother, but Shirley's mom. When our mom hit the age of 80, it was he who decided that we would have a party every year for her. He had only missed one of these over the many years. During COVID-19, he would religiously go down to Westmoreland just to take her on dry house, which usually ended up with them having Devon House ice cream. He was very attentive and patient with her. At the family annual Christmas dinner, he never failed to have the first dance with her. Their favorite songs were, Honey, You Are My Shining Star, and There's No Me Without You By The Man Hands. Milton was a supportive brother. His brothers were his best friend. We learned very soon not to tell any one of them our secrets, as they tell each other almost everything. Throughout his cancer journey, it was painful to watch as they suffered along with him. Honestly, they lost more weight than he did. There were times that I refused to accept my sister's phone call as she was always crying and there was nothing I could do to console her. Fun childhood memories of him. He carried around with him bags of joke and was funny as he could be. He was top 10 on personal hygiene. He never ate after he brushed his teeth, period. He was a neat freak. He wore quality clothing and his shoes were always clean. Do not touch him when he's dressed, as he thought that he was all fat and more than a bag of chips. Milton was a loyal husband. He loved his wife. And there were days when you could never separate them. He would sweetly go wherever his wife went. They were modern day Miss Lou and Mass Ron. Singing together, he had a beautiful tenor. Always poking fun at each other and laughing their behinds off. Milton was a good father. He showered his kids with attention and care. He was their biggest supporter and cheerleader. He supported their dreams and made sure that each of them felt valued and seen. We are proud that you were there for him when he needed you the most. Donating blood, getting your friends to donate blood, taking time out from your job to spend quality time with him. He often would say that they made his heart glad. Thank you. He loved his nieces and nephews, and his warm and friendly personality had endeared them to him. Milton was an amazing friend and colleague. He was loyal to his friends as he was to his family. He left us a part of him that neither time nor even death can ever take away. To all of us who knew him, he was there for us. One call of his name, and he would be with you in a heartbeat. One mentioned that you were me in need, and he would give even his last penny. In this ever-changing world, he was our constant. As I look into the crowd of mourners, of people mourning for him, we find comfort in knowing that you loved him. We find peace in knowing that he touched your life and that he touched his heart at, a, at some point in his life. We find happiness in knowing that he will live on in our memories. 
He may not have lived a perfect life, but he lived a good one. One that we will forever cherish and we will continue to remember. Let us treasure the life we share with him over the, over the pain that his death has brought us. To Charlotte, our modern name is Lou. You came into our family as a sister-in-law. Today, you are officially as a sister, as he made us promise. The brothers are all married. Milton, Desi, Jay, nephew, dad, dad, uncle, cousin, friend, modern day mastron. This is your final curtain call. Walk good, and we will see you in that great get enough morning. Lovely Summiton by Elaine Jared Askell. Good afternoon.
Lord. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither suffer nor sleep. And this is the word of the Lord.
there is hope. The Lord is on your side. And He is going to give you strength to continue. It is only appropriate, Pastor, after such a powerful message, Pastor Dennis, that we have a prayer of consolation and comfort. And so I'm going to ask Pastor Linton, Pastor Mark Linton, to come and to pray that prayer. Alright, Pastor, is coming. And then we are going to give some instructions. So we ask that you remain with us. So the congregation is to stand and the family will remain seated at this time. The congregation will stand and the family will remain seated at this time. I just want to convey on behalf of Pastor Peter Wyland from Tropical Ministries, Father Alexis, on behalf of the leadership team at Tropical, and to the family and friends of Pastor Jared, most sincere condolences to you. Um, we are praying, and what we will be able to do, family seated, I just want to ask that you stretch your hands for the family as a uh, you know, symbolic of extending some of the fun. Father, we thank you that you are God, that you are mighty. Father, we thank you that you are suffering. Father, we thank you that there is nothing that is impossible with you. Father, we thank you that you are the God of our comfort. Your word has declared that you comfort us with a comfort over his God that you have given unto us when we lose someone when we go through any children or any trials that we may be able to comfort those who are going through any trials themselves that with the comfort that we have received of ourselves. Father, we exalt and praise your great name this morning. Father, we commend the Jared family into your hands. Father, we pray that the undergird and the people will strengthen them during this season of loss of men and father. We pray that the Jared will strengthen them that they will not sorrow, even as others sorrow, but oh my God, that they also have hope for the comfort of Jared of men and father has made himself right with you before he passed on. Father, we pray that the legacy will live on in this family of men and father. And so we pray that this morning that you will them comfort, that you will them, you will them strength, that you will
as we navigate our feelings and learn to cope. In addition, we would like to extend our appreciation to the church and a special thank you to Brother Graham, who has been extremely patient with the family, constantly checking in and being that older person, regardless of the hour we may call in. The Jared family would like to say a big thank you. And with that, I invite the congregation to stand at this time. I invite the congregation to stand. So I ask the call bearers to take your positions at this time. The platform party will be uh, first. The senior officers and guests that are present. Uh, you can also make your leave when you're home with the senior officers when we begin singing up the hymn. Uh, the families also making an announcement here that we're invited to the repast after the interim at the Holy Trinity Church Hall, that's at Westgate. So for those who are here, you are invited to the repast at the Holy Trinity Church Hall at Westgate. So please bear that to go to see my. As we make our way to the place of interim new view, the purses, the outriders will be in place, followed by the chaplain's vehicle, then the instrument of peace while we make our way out. Yes, so he will do that as we make our way out to the recess.
Come on, let me see you four come back. 